Back to Dragonfruit. So, all in all, I started a, a, a field trial with 18 varieties. Many of those were duplicates, like I mentioned, but we didn't know any better at the time, so we introduced them. The big thing was that they had been reported to produce fruit without human intervention. Planting them in urban, food sun, I didn't name any of them, like many of us do with our house plants. I neglected them as best I could. We were sure not there, you know, it's the only thing I made sure they got was water. And uh, being a cacti, we were applying too much water. So that's something that is still going to determine what the proper amount of water and um, we could have hundreds of fruits uh, to measure different fruits in terms of the bricks context. So that's kind of a representative video. The average yield that's uh, in plants that we selected are data plants out of a trial. Uh, it also shows a relative tolerance to heat meaning uh, how much they suffer in the sun and how much sunburn they show. And uh, that chart doesn't have it, but the one that we don't pick up at, uh, at the, in, in, inside, it shows what the scale means. One means the lower the number, the less tolerance to these can fall. So the higher the number, the, uh, the less, the more, the more tolerant they are. And so you can use that as a screening tool, based on where you are and how extreme the hit is in your location. For those of you who got the chart, uh, after observation, we, do, we determined that varieties number 7, 11, and 16 are pretty much the same for all practical purposes. It is a Vietnamese giant, it's a Vietnamese variety, Vietnamese white. We also have it as a Mexicana, but it's a true Hylotherius and Dados, true soul pollinating, true soul fertile, we will produce them by itself. Number 10 and number 15, American Beauty and Guillermo Red in that chart are pretty much the same as well. That's the Hylocarius Guatemalensis. And that is a plant that I wouldn't recommend you guys grow in full sun. It's a big sulfur to the day. It's just suitable. I mean, 15, the bigger the pot, that's probably the better. Because over time, if the roots will just get compacted. But you know, kind of be practical in that sense. How are you growing? Uh, I mentioned birds are perhaps the biggest problem for commercial growers. And uh, for, for home gardeners, not a big deal. And, and, and I'll tell you what I do, and it's something that you guys may do as well if you have birds and you don't want to put a netting over the top of your plants. What I'm using now is paint strainer bags. You know, I buy the, uh, the one gallon bags and uh, about, about two, two per 250 for two. And uh, they have an elastic band at the base, so I just kind of put it in, uh, over the foot. What I like about it is it keeps the birds off. And, and it doesn't block the light, so the fruit's still getting light, and it's, a, it's shading some of it, so it, it gets a really nice color when you put them in a bag, you know, as opposed to using paper bags, which is another alternative that, that people use, uh, you know, in other places for other food, they use uh, uh, manila bags, you know, and, uh, but those block all light. I mean, it's pretty dark in there, so you don't get the color. The other thing that I've seen is in, in El Salvador, is empty, Coca-Cola uh, Coca or empty soft drink, uh, you know, the plastic bottles, they will make a slip on one side of the bottle and uh, somehow manage to, manage to open it up and it goes the fruit in it and then you get this, like, uh, it's almost like a mini greenhouse inside. Because it will, uh, but uh, if you do that, I will probably poke a few holes in there just to get more air, you know, which is the nice thing about this uh, paint straining bags because they, they ventilate, they, 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 there is full uh, you know, air, it's not a problem, and then they, they block some light, but not all of it. Uh, so birds harvest things out. This is what birds will do to them. They will eat them up. And the thing is, for uh, commercial purposes, it doesn't matter how much of a hole they make. I mean, as long as they peck on it. It is for, for, for your own consumption. What I do, I just chuck the, you know, the, damaged part and, and I go for it, you know, it's kind of a, <laughs> we have a saying, in, I'm from Honduras originally, and, and, and we have a saying or, or a joke, you know, about what is worse than finding a maggot in a fruit, you know what that is? 
Even the tropics and you eat guavas, I mean, you know, chances are you, you're sure a few of us. <laughs> what else? This is it. Uh, propagation, seeds germinate quite readily. So if you want to play geneticist and a plant breeder, you can do your process and save the seeds and the plants will grow nicely. Uh, and Ed probably can tell you more about how it was Extract the seeds, how to dry them up, and do all that because he's been playing with them and done some of that. But they germinate uh, very well, the, uh, and uh, and that's part of the reason why the genetic makeup of some of the clones we have is really difficult to discern because uh, the, the preferred method is cuttings. You get cuttings, they propagate uh, commercially. The best way to propagate them is cuttings, but the seeds germinate quite readily, so it's not a problem. It's uh, different stages. And, uh, and that opened the night before last, so I had to give it to my wife. They don't last very long. <laughs> they don't last very long when it opens up. No, they it don't. All night. But the uh, the flower can can be uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll open it up in a moment. But what I was gonna say, the, the flower they can be once fully open, depending on the variety, up to 18 inches in diameter. When they're, I mean, it's gorgeous flower. This variety in particular is one called Valdivia Roja, and it has the probably the prettiest, among dragon for the prettiest flower. No, it's not in there. But did you want to use any of these? And uh, with, with the um, both breaks, it takes about 20 days from both break to, and, and when the buds start to swell, you will see like a reddish spot right under the thorns. You know, it will start like a, a red dot. And then it just starts swelling. From the moment it starts, you know, it differentiates, it, it, it starts swelling. It takes about 20 days from bud break to, to the flower to bloom. Uh, this variety in particular is one of that open latest at night. There's a big difference in terms of, of when at night the flowers open. Most of the white flesh variety open very early in the evening. The light which is a light pink variety, opens very early in the evening. And the pollination in San Diego, well, in Irvine, is done by bees. Bees are the ones that, that do it. What you'll find is that bees get into these flowers even before they open. You know, right at uh, dusk, you will see bees, they find that they land like right at the tip and they crawl the inside and they come in and come out and uh, a lot of activity. So that probably has a lot to do with the self the self-reported self-fertility or self-pollinating activity because it is bees that are doing it but they are the ones that uh, the flowers that open early are more prone to be pollinated by bees than flowers that open late at night like this. Without the sitting vertical on a plant there's no way that pollen is going to get out but if the flower is like this it's going to happen so it's going to be self-pollinating so and that makes it kind of hard to, to determine uh, you know, whether they are self-fertile or self-pollinating. But uh, we, we will, we've been working on that and uh, trying to see and bag some fruit and trying to, to determine uh, whether they are or they are not. So once you get your bloom, if it's pollinated, you will see it. You, know, you will see that the, the base of the flower will remain green and start swelling. And uh, if not, you will see that the, the base of the plant will stay like this and it will start drying up and eventually it will just drop. There is a lot of abortion. The flowers get aborted, I mean, right after, you know, a few days or several days after a bud break. So they will, some of them will abort, you know, you will see that they will just turn yellow, and kind of an orange color, and they will just dry up and fall off before they, they will grow up to the